morning everybody. My name is teacher Hassan Isa Mpangwe. Welcome to Darasa Huru live on East Africa TV. And this is English lesson and it is very special for grade 7 but other students also can listen and learn. I hope it will be helpful and useful. Oh, and today's lesson is uh, expressing kinship. Expressing kinship relations. This is our today's lesson. Uh, but I would like to remind you of COVID-19. Uh, it is still there, so you have to take precaution. Wash your hands regularly with soap, but if you have a hand sanitizer, you have to apply it. Sanitize uh, as much as you can so that uh, to keep away from COVID-19. It is very dangerous, we know it, so keep taking precaution. Uh, let's do correction. Uh, last time I provided homework, hope you did, so we have to do correction. Uh, the first question is excuse me how do I get to the dash of the town the correct answer is the center of the town question number two the hotel is about eight dash is about eight meters dash then the correct answer is on your left. Number three, excuse me, I'm looking for my hotel. So the correct answer, if you are giving direction, is move to the right. Number four, go straight on, soon you will pass a statue dash. Then the correct answer is on the left. Uh, Peter Pantaleo from Benjamin Mkapa. Hope you do correction on question number two. Uh, Shalima Matachio as well on question, question number four. Uh, let's get started. Our today's topic, as I introduced you before, is expressing kinship relations but before starting this topic uh, let's do let's revise first what we learned last week uh, we learned about expressing directions and the first subtopic was uh, using prepositions using like between in front uh, behind up down opposite so those were prepositions we use the in describing or expressing direction. But also, we went to another subtopic, which was uh, expressing direction using the cardinal points, north, south, uh, west, east. You say in the west, uh, in the south, in the north, uh, in the east. But the last subtopic, uh, it was uh, describing or expressing direction using uh, left, right, and center. We say that you use prepositions like on the left, uh, on the right, uh, at the center, to the center. So I think the topic was useful and now you can express direction either using uh, prepositions but also uh, using uh, cardinal, the cardinal points. So our today's topic is called the expressing kinship relationship. First of all, uh, we need to understand the word kin. 
expressing kinship. What does it mean? Kin. Uh, the word kin can simply mean a uh, family. So kinship means family relations. Uh, family relationship. So we are going to discuss about family relationship. So kinship relations, we are just going to look at uh, ties based on blood and marriage. This family relationship, uh, we mean a blood relationship, but also relationship based on uh, marriage. So kinship, we can say, Kinship means uh, the ties based on based on uh, blood based on blood and uh, marriage. So. I think everybody has a family, uh, and family starts with father, mother, and children. And sometimes uh, your father has a brother or sister, and your father has a father and mother. So this family uh, becomes extended family. So we are going to discuss relationship uh, among the members of family. So first of all, we are going to look at the names of uh, family members, then we shall use a family tree to describe these relations, and later on we shall read a passage that will help us know uh, about uh, kinship relationship. So today, is, today let's discuss uh, names of family members So the following are list of names uh, we use when expressing family members depending on how we relate. So as I told you that we are going to discuss first these names, then later on we shall look at uh, a family tree. So when we talk about family tree, uh, actually we talk about a chart that shows all the people in our family over many generations. Let's take a look when we talk about family members so, so that at least you can get uh, an idea about a family tree that we will be using uh, to describe or to express uh, family members. A family tree. Yeah, that is a family trees uh, starting uh, with grandparents, uh, then later on children. So we shall discuss it later. So now let's look at the names 
of uh, family members names of family members Let's look at these names. The first one here, we have aunt. Who is aunt to you? Uh, aunt, uh, first of all, we have to look at gender because sometimes we confuse, uh, for example, the word nephew and niece confuse many children and many learners. Uh, who is nephew? Is it male or female. So auntie is female. Female. Let's take a look first. Female. Yeah, it's a female and not male. So aunt is female. Good. Then who is aunt? Aunt yeah, is the brother, I mean the, the sister the sister of of your father the sister of your father or mother so the sister of your father or mother is called the aunt but also uh, aunt can mean the wife of your uncle the wife of your uncle. Also aunt means uh, the wife of your aunt. So your, your uncle's wife uh, is called the aunt. Then who is uncle? Who is uncle? Uncle, when you look at gender, gender means sex, either male or female. Uncle is male. So who is uncle? Uncle, we say, is the brother, the brother of your, of your mother, or father so uncle uncle we say he is the brother of your mother or father but also uncle can mean the husband of your aunt the husband of your aunt So uncle is the brother of your mother or father. Then the husband can mean the husband of your aunt. Let's take a look. When you say uncle, we mean male. Uh, his sex is male. Or gender, we say is male. Yeah, we can say this is my uncle. So we mean the brother of your mother or father. Or the husband of your aunt. Okay. Good. Number three is a niece. I said niece and female confuse many students. So niece, who is niece? Niece, first of all, when we look at gender, is female. Niece is female. And niece, we say 
the daughter of your brother or sister the daughter of your brother or sister so niece the daughter of your brother or sister okay for example if you, you introduce her to your friend you can say look at that girl she is called Jenny she is my niece eh, the daughter of my brother or the daughter of my sister so niece eh, when you look at gender is female eh, the daughter of your brother or sister and the opposite is nephew 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 is male a male then who is nephew nephew is the son of your the son of your brother or sister nephew nephew the son of your brother or sister look at that uh, boy the boy you can say this is my nephew uh, the son of my my brother or my sister then another word here is cousin cousin Number five is cousin. Cousin, we use cousin for both male and, and female. Cousin can be a boy or a girl. So we use cousin for both male and female. And cousin is a child. A child uh, of your aunt, of your aunt or uncle. This is my cousin. You mean you are uncles or you are aunties, child. So you say this is my cousin, and can be a male or female. Uh, number sixty is. First of all, let's, let's take a look and look at that picture of... Okay, as we are waiting, let's continue. Number... Yeah, you can say, uh, these are my cousins. You mean that you are, you are uncles or aunties' children. You say, these are my cousins. Very good. Then let's look at this one. A grandmother. A grandmother. Grandmother, first, this one is female. And who is grandmother? This is your father. Or mother's mother I mean your father's mother so we say the father I mean the mother the mother 
of your of your father or mother the father of your mother or father is called the a grandmother I want to visit my grandmother next week or I shall visit my grandmother next week means you are mother's mother or you are father's mother look at that grandmother the old woman with white hair uh, is we call a grandmother she is my grandmother okay so we say grandmother if she is your mother's mother or your father's mother. Uh, another word here is grandfather. Grandfather. This is male. This is a male and the grandfather is the father of your father or mother. So the father of your father or mother is called the uh, grand, grandfather. Look at the old man uh, carrying a child at his back. We call him uh, grandfather okay I was just walking along the road with my grandfather okay so grandfather we mean uh, the father of your father or, or mother then there is this word great great grand grandfather great great grandfather great grandfather great grandfather uh, we mean first of all this one is a male great grandfather this is uh, the father of your grandfather so we use the word great if there is another person after this one so if there is another person after this one you say great great grandfather if there is another one you say great 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 grandfather so the G rule is continuing if you want to show uh, these ascensors okay we say great grandfather great great grandfather great 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 grandfather uh, another word here is uh, grandson grand grandson this is a, a male Uh, grandson, a son of your son or daughter. A son of your son or, or daughter. A son of your son or daughter, uh, we call him grandson. If you have children, then your children get children those children you will call them grandson okay like the picture of the old man with his grandson at his back okay we say a grandson i was just walking around with my grandson okay so we say grandson very good
So uh, let's finish up with the last one. Granddaughter. Granddaughter, we say a daughter of your son or daughter. Okay? So finish up this one yourself. Number 10. Uh, this is female. Number 10 will be grand. Grand. Daughter. So you have to feel this one yourself. Granddaughter, we say uh, a daughter of your daughter or son. Then I have to give you homework. Here I have some questions for you. Uh, you have to fill in the blanks. Question number one. Your uncle's wife is your. Number two. My sister's son is my. Fill in the blank. And... Number three, the father of your father is number four, Halima, Asha, Mwajua are the daughters of my brother. They are my, fill in the blank. Uh, number five, the brother of your father is your, fill in the blank. Number six, the sister of your mother is your fill in the blanks. Uh, and uh, here I have some of students who always call me, uh, send their messages. Actually, we thank you for cooperating with us. Uh, Clara Munch from Base Beach Primary School, Angela Fabian from uh, Rehoboth. Lehoboth Model School, uh, Mwanza, Lulu Fumo from Ali Happy Primal School, Dar es Salaam, Lailat Omari from Kisutu, Daudi Lazaro from Kinyamburi Manyara, uh, Judith from Arusha, uh, Antonia Kaguv from Mwanga. Uh, Rehema Isaka from Kunduchi, Agnes Yusuf and Rebecca, thank you for watching. Shani inabidi ufanye vitu rahisi kama vile moja mbili tatu na Colgate moja anga anga mbili sugu ameno yako tatu tabasam siku nzima na hewa safi kinywani tabasam siku nzima na meno yako yenye nguvu fanya hatua za Colgate moja mbili tatu ili uweze kutabasam siku za usoni Get ready for Heaven's Live broadcast. To show you that Jesus is Lord of over Hollywood. Best production design. The movie, The Shape of Water. The Shape of Water. Encounter an unmatched prophet like no other. The Holy Ghost is saying, set them apart. Sanctify them. Separate them. You understand this? He says your life should be a life that is sanctified, that is set apart. That is separated. 
from the rest of the experiences out there in the world. Prophet Elvis Mboni, a prophet approved of God through accurate signs and global prophetic fulfillments that have changed the course of nations. On the Power of Prophecy with Prophet Elvis Mboni, every Sunday, 8.30 a.m. on East Africa TV. Karibuni katika kipindi hiki cha darasa huru wanafunzi wa nyumbani. Kipindi hiki ni mahususi kwa ajili ya wanafunzi wa darasa la saba lakini darasa la sita na la tano pia mnakaribishwa katika kipindi hiki ili kuweza kupata maarifa. Bado tunapenda kusisitiza tuweze kuchukua tahadhari mbalimbali kutokana na ugonjwa wa corona. Corona ipo na corona inaua. Tunaweza tukatumia vitakasa mikono, hand sanitizers au tukatumia sabuni na maji tiririka. Ulikuwa na mwalimu wa Kiingereza Mr. Mpangwe sasa utakuwa pamoja nami mwalimu Idi Kanka katika somo hili la science. Kabla hatujaanza somo letu tuangalie masaisho ya kazi niliyoiacha kipindi kilichopita. Swali la kwanza liliuliza ili mbegu iweze kupitia mabadiliko ya ukuaji inahitaji vitu gani ili mbegu iweze kupitia mabadiliko ya ukuaji inahitaji vitu gani jiblake ilikuwa inahitaji hewa ya oksijen maji na joto kwa hiyo kama mwanafunzi uliandika hivyo ulikuwa huko sahihi na swali la pili liliuliza ni kitu gani hutokea mbegu inapofyonza maji ni kitu gani hutokea mbegu inapofyonza maji? Jibu lake ni kwamba mbegu inapofyonza maji huvimba na kupasuka. Hilo ndio badiliko ambalo hutokea. Swali la tatu liliuliza. Kati ya kianza mzizi na kianza mche, kipi huanza kuchomoza? Jibu lake ni kianza mzizi huanza kuchomoza. Kwa hiyo kama uliandika kianza mzizi basi uko sahihi. Tukija katika swali la nne Liliuliza ni kitu gani hutokea baada ya mmea kutoa majani? Ni kitu gani hutokea baada ya mmea kutoa majani? Jibu lake mmea unapotoa majani huanza kujitengenezea chakula chake chenyewe au kusanisi nuru. Wanafunzi wengi swali hili mlikosa. Waliopata ni wanafunzi 13 pekee kati ya wanafunzi 400 waliojibu swali hili. Na swali la mwisho na la tano Iliuliza ni mmea gani kotiledoni zake hubaki ardhini? Ni mmea gani kotiledoni zake hubaki ardhini? Jiblake lilikuwa mimea jamii ya monocotyledon kama mahindi, mpunga na mtama. Kwa hiyo hayo ndio alikuwa masaisho yetu. Kama umekosea unaweza ukafanya usahihi, lakini kama umepata pia tunakupongeza. Mwendelezo wetu wa mada ni mada ya viumbe hai. Leo tutaangalia uzazi na ukuaji katika mimea. Katika mada yetu ya leo, mada yetu inaitwa uzazi na ukuaji katika mimea. Katika mada hii tutakuja kuangalia mimea inakuwa na uzazi vipi na inakuwa vipi mpaka inaweza ikafikia hatua moja au hatua nyingine. Mimea ni viumbe hai, kwa hiyo viumbe hai vina sifa ya kuzaliana. Kwa hiyo tutakuja kuangalia 
Lakini kwanza kabisa tujue nini maana ya uzazi. kija kuangalia maana ya uzazi tunasema kwamba uzazi ni mchakato wa kibayolojia ambao kiumbe kipya hai huweza kuzaliwa kwa hiyo tukiangalia kabisa tunasema kwamba uzazi ni mchakato wa kibayolojia ambao kiumbe kipya hai huweza kutokea au kuzaliwa hii ndio maana ya uzazi lakini uzazi huu ambao tunazungumzia hapa kama nilivyotamka awali nilisema kwamba tunaangalia uzazi katika mimea kwa hiyo mimea inapokomaa au inapoweza kupevuka basi huweza kuzaa mmea mwingine mdogo ndio maana tunasema kiumbe hai kipya kingine kinaweza kuzaliwa hiyo ndiyo maana ya uzazi katika mimea baada ya kuangalia maana ya uzazi tunasema kwamba katika uzazi huu wa mimea kuna mimea mingine ili iweze kuzaliana mimea mingine huoteshwa kwa kutumia mimea yenyewe kwa hiyo ili mimea iweze kuzaliana kuna mimea ambayo unaweka mbegu baada ya kuweka mbegu mmea utaota lakini kuna mimea ambayo ili iweze kuzaliana unachukua mmea wenyewe kama mmea wenyewe unaupanda ndiyo utaweza kukua na kuzaliana. Kwa mfano, baadhi ya mimea ambayo unaipanda yenyewe kama yenyewe. Kuna miwa. Utakuja kuona katika picha, miwa ni miongoni mwa mimea ambayo uweza ukaupanda wenyewe kama wenyewe kisha ukaota. Kwa hiyo ni baadhi ya mimea ambayo ukipanda yenyewe kama yenyewe inaota. Mea kwanza tumesema ni miwa. Nadhani wote tunaifahamu miwa. Miwa ni miongoni mwa mimea ambayo yenyewe kipanda inaota. Kama tunavona katika picha hapo kuna shamba la miwa. Miwa hiyo imeweza kupandwa pia ikaweza kuota. Mimea mingine ni mihogo. Mihogo pia ni mimea ambayo kipandwa yenyewe kama yenyewe huweza kuota. Wengi tunafahamu kitaka kupanda mwogo unachukua ule mti unachomeka chini kisha mti huo utaota na pia kuna migomba migomba ina yenyewe ni miongoni mwa mimea ambayo utakapo taka iyote basi sharti uchukue mgomba wenyewe uweze kupanda kwa hiyo hiyo ni mimea ambayo ili kuota basi lazima upande mche wake baada ya kuangalia hapo tuangalie aina za mimea
baada ya kuangalia maana ya uzazi na mimea ambayo inaweza kaoteshwa yenyewe kama yenyewe tukija katika upande wa pili tunaangalia aina za mimea tunasema kwamba kuna aina mbili za mimea kuna aina mbili za mimea kwanza kabisa mwanafunzi inabidi utambue kuna mimea inayotoa maua kuna mimea inayotoa maua mfano miti ya matunda mbalimbali mfano tunapoangalia katika ukuaji wa mimea ya matunda mfano kama maembe mti wa maembe kabla haujazaa unakuwa kwanza kabisa unatoa maua kama tunavyoona huo ni mfano wa mti wa maembe ambao mimea hii kabla haijakuwa inaanza kwanza kutoa maua kwa hiyo hii ni miongoni mwa mimea ambayo inatoa maua na pia mti ya mipapai mipapai pia inapokuwa katika ukuaji wake huweza kwanza kutoa maua alafu baadaye inakuja kuzaa katika picha hapo tunaona mfano wa miti ya mipapai nadhani wengi tunaifahamu lakini pia miti ya mializeti wengi tunafahamu mmea wa alizeti mmea wa alizeti pia huweza kutoa maua kama tunavyoona hapo kama mikoa ya singida singida alizeti ipo kwa wingi nadhani watakuwa wanazifahamu pia iringa na mikoa mingine kwa hiyo hiyo nayo ni miongoni mwa mimea ambayo hutoa maua baada ya kuangalia mimea inayotoa maua tukija katika upande wa pili aina nyingine ya mimea kuna mimea isiyotoa maua kwa hiyo aina ya kwanza mimea inayotoa maua mifano tumeweza kuiangalia na aina ya pili ni mimea isiyotoa maua kwa hiyo kuna mimea ambayo yenyewe haiwezi kutoa maua mfano kuna mimea inaitwa kuvu mimea hii inaitwa kuvu kwa jina la kitaalamu wanaita fungi au fungus mimea ambayo imeweza kushambuliwa na wadudu mbalimbali au fungus kama tunavyoona mimea hii ambayo imeshambuliwa na kuvu basi inakuwa haiwezi kutoa maua kama tunavyoona huo ni mfano wa mimea jamii ya kuvu mimea hii haitoi maua tukija katika mfano mwingine kuna mmea au zao la mwani zao hili la mwani huwa halitoi maua zao hili linapatikana sana sehemu za upwa au sehemu za pwani hasa Zanzibar zao hili hutumika kama dawa na matumizi mengine kwa hiyo mwani pia ni miongoni mwa mimea ambayo haitoi maua baada ya kuangalia mifano hiyo tuendelee na sehemu nyingine Baada ya kuangalia aina za mimea sasa tuangalie sehemu za ua kabla hatujaangalia sehemu za ua tujue kwanza maua ni nini maua ni miongoni mwa mimea na hapa tunaangalia uzazi na ukuaji katika mimea maua ni majani ya kipekee maua ni majani ya kipekee yenye sehemu za uzazi wa mimea na hutoa mimea mipya au mmea mpya kwa hiyo mwanafunzi wa darasa la saba kitu cha kutambua ni kwamba maua ni majani ya kipekee yenye sehemu za uzazi wa mmea na hutoa mimea mipya au mmea mpya. Kwa hiyo mada yetu nasema uzazi na ukuaji katika mimea. Kwa hiyo maua ni majani ya kipekee ambayo pia na yenyewe yana uzazi. Maua yanaweza kuzaliana na kutoa mimea mipya. Kwa hiyo baada ya kuangalia maana ya maua, 
tuangalie mifano mbalimbali ya maua. Nadhani wanafunzi mnajua maua mbalimbali, lakini pia na sisi tumeweza kuandaa picha mbalimbali ili uweze ukajua maua yanakuwa yanaonekana katika sura ipi. Baada ya kujua maana ya maua, basi tuangalie picha mbalimbali ambazo zinaonesha maua yana sura ipi. Kama ukiangalia hapo katika skrini yako utaona mifano mbalimbali ya maua ambazo zinaonekana hapo mbele yako. Kwa hiyo hiyo ni mifano ya maua. Yapo maua mengi sana. Nadhani wanafunzi tunatambua. Baada ya kuangalia mifano hiyo ya maua, basi tuangalie sehemu za ua. Sasa tuangalie sehemu za ua. Tunasema kwamba ua lina sehemu kuu mbili. Ua lina sehemu kuu mbili. A sehemu za nje na B sehemu za ndani. Kwa hiyo mwanafunzi utambue kwamba ua lina sehemu kuu mbili. Sehemu ya kwanza tunaziita sehemu za nje na sehemu ya pili ni sehemu za ndani. Sehemu za nje ni zile sehemu ambazo zinaonekana nje utakapoangalia ua. Zile sehemu ambazo muonekano wake ni wa nje tunaziita sehemu za nje. Lakini sehemu za ndani hauwezi ukaziona hivi hivi kwa macho mpaka uweze kulipasua lile ua katika vipande viwili ndio utaweza kuziona sehemu nyingine. Kwa hiyo leo tutaangalia sehemu za nje za ua. Sehemu hii ni ipi? Tukija katika picha yetu kwanza Naweza tukaona mchoro unaonesha sehemu za nje za ua. Mchoro huu unaonesha sehemu za nje za ua ambazo zipo tatu. Sehemu ya kwanza ukiangalia inaitwa petali. Sehemu hii ya kwanza kabisa ambayo tumeweza kuionesha hapa ndiyo inaitwa petali. Tutakuja kuangalia petali na kazi gani? Baada ya kuangalia petali pia kuna sehemu nyingine inaitwa sepali haya majani yaliyokaa kwa muundo huu yanaitwa sepali tutakuja kuangalia sepali zina kazi gani katika sehemu za nje za ua baada ya kuangalia sepali sehemu yetu ya mwisho inaitwa kikonyo kwa hiyo hichi kitu kilichoshikilia ua hapa kinaitwa kikonyo nadhani mwanafunzi utakuwa umetambua ua sehemu zake za nje ni zipi tulisema kwanza ni petali juu kabisa kama tunavyoona baada ya petali tulisema kuna sehemu hii ambayo maua yake yanakuwa yamekaa kwa muundo huu yanaitwa sepali na mwisho kabisa tuna kitu kinachoitwa kikonyo. Kwa hiyo baada ya kuangalia sehemu hizo tuangalie kazi zake ni zipi. kabla hatujaandika kazi ya hizi sehemu mwanafunzi inabidi utambue sehemu za nje za ua ni zipi ya kwanza tumesema ni petali 
ya pili ni separi na ya mwisho ni kikonyo. Kwa hiyo mwanafunzi natakiwa uandike sehemu hizi za nje. Baada ya kuandika sehemu hizi tuangalie kazi zake ni zipi. Tuangalie sehemu ya kwanza. Sehemu ya kwanza tunasema ni separi. Separi kama tulivyoiona hapa tunasema kwamba separi kwanza kabisa zina rangi ya chani kiwiti. Zina rangi ya chani kiwiti. Chani kiwiti chani kiwiti ni rangi ambayo ya kijani. Kwa hiyo utakapoona neno chani kiwiti inamaanisha rangi ya kijani. Hii ni sifa ya kwanza separi ina rangi ya chani kiwiti lakini tukija kazi yake. Kazi yake ni uhifadhi huwa kabla halijachanua uhifadhi uwa kabla halijachanua kwa hiyo uwa kabla halijachanua kitu ambacho uhifadhi ni separi nadhani katika picha tuliweza kuiona separi iko vipi na inaonekana katika muonekano upi baada ya kuangalia separi tuangalie sehemu nyingine na kazi yake Kija katika sehemu ya pili miongoni mwa sehemu za nje za ua ni petali. Petali tumesema ni sehemu moja wapo ya nje ambayo inaonekana katika ua. Petali kazi yake zina rangi ambazo huvutia wadudu. Hii ni kazi kubwa ya petali. Wengi tunafahamu katika maua tunaweza tukaona wadudu mbalimbali ikiwemo nyuki, dondola na jamii nyingine ya wadudu ambao wanaruka. Kwa hiyo wadudu hao wote ambao wanaruka na kwenda kwenye maua huwa wanavutiwa na rangi, hasa vipepeo. Upenda sana kwenda kwenye maua. Kwa hiyo kitu ambacho kinavutia tunakiita petali. Kwa hiyo petali zina rangi ambazo huvutia wadudu. Baada ya kuangalia, tumalizie na sehemu ya mwisho. Kija kuangalia sehemu yetu ya mwisho ni kikonyo. Wengi tulikiona hapo kikonyo kinaonekana vipi? Lakini tukija katika upande wa kazi ya kikonyo, tunasema kwamba kikonyo hushikilia ua na kuunganisha ua na mmea wenyewe. Hii ndio kazi ya kikonyo. 
kushikilia ua na kuunganisha ua na mmea wenyewe. Tukija kuangalia katika hii picha nadhani hizi sehemu zote ambazo nimeweza kuzisema zote zipo katika hiyo picha. Na wengi tumeona kikonyo kinaonekana vipi na kazi ya kikonyo hiyo ambayo nimeweza kuisema kazi yake ni kushikilia ua na kuunganisha ua na mmea wenyewe. Hiyo ndiyo kazi ya kikonyo. Kwa hiyo kwa leo naomba tuishie hapo katika sehemu za nje za ua tuangalie maswali ya nyumbani. Maswali ya kazi ya nyumbani ni kama yafuatayo. Swali la kwanza linasema nini maana ya uzazi? Kwa hiyo mwanafunzi utaniambia nini maana ya uzazi? Lakini kama nilivyoambia mwanzo, uzazi tunazungumzia hapa ni uzazi wa mimea. Nini maana ya uzazi? Swali la pili linasema ni mimea gani huoteshwa kwa kutumia mimea yenyewe? Kwa hiyo mwanafunzi utaniambia ni mimea gani huoteshwa kwa kutumia mimea yenyewe? Swali la tatu linauliza nini maana ya maua? Nini maana ya maua? Mwanafunzi utaniambia nini maana ya maua? Swali la nne linasema taja sehemu za nje za ua na kazi zake. Kwa hiyo utataja sehemu hizo za ua na kazi zake. Swali la tano na la mwisho linasema kuna aina ngapi za mimea? zitaje kwa hiyo utataja zipo ngapi alafu utazitaja majina ya mimea ambayo unaifahamu hiyo ndiyo kazi ya nyumbani lakini kabla sijamaliza kipindi changu ningependa kwanza kabisa kuwataja wanafunzi kwa dakika hii iliyobaki waliofanya vizuri katika homework iliyopita ilipata message nyingi 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 kwa wanafunzi wengi sana wanafika kama nne lakini wanafunzi ambao walifanya vizuri ni wanafunzi kumi na tatu pekee. Kwa hiyo wazazi wa wanafunzi hawa ikiwezekana mwatafutie zawadi. Hata soda sio mbaya. Wa kwanza kabisa anaitwa Gloria Jamali, anatokea shule ya St. Everin Primary School Kagera Biaramulo. Huyu ni miongoni mwa wanafunzi ambao walipata maswali yote. Wa pili anaitwa Lukumani. Lukumani Nyambege ya shule ya msingi Nyamakonge Kibiti Pwani. Na watatu anaitwa Amina Rahimu anatokea shule ya msingi Sokoni 1 Arusha. Hao walipata zote bila kumsahau Nura Timusa. Huyu anatokea shule ya msingi Faraja Maalumu Arusha. Watano anaitwa Rose Kimu anatokea shule ya msingi Dongo Besh Manyara. Jamila Ali shule ya msingi Ziwani Saidi Hamisi Uhuru Mbea. Regina Gabriel anatokea Marambabi Tanga Bilvian Datus anatokea Kagera Adela Neot Mbezi Juda Dar es Salaam wa mwisho Franki anatokea shule ya msingi. Hao waliweza kupata maswali yote. Ah, kwa kumalizia, napenda kuwapongeza na pia tuendelee kuchukua tahadhari dhidi ya corona. Corona ipo na corona inaua. Ulikuwa nami Mwalimu Idi Kanka, nikutakie tazamaji mwema katika vipindi vinavyokuja. Asanteni sana.
dakika ya kwanza ilikuwa ni dakika yenye furaha maishani mwangu dakika ya tano nikaanza kuyaona majonzi maishani mwangu muda unavyozidi kusogea mbele zidi kuziona dakika zinazidi kuwa ngumu kwangu kila nikizifikiria dakika 90 sijui 